good? Y'all, your boy Dev, please ain't. Today, man, we're gonna talk about J. Cole's album. Um, you know, I'm giving a final verdict. KOD, his fifth studio album. And just as I expected, um, you know, whenever a Cole album or a Cole project drops, uh, you know, it got the same feedback that I'm used to. Like, people, people are hating on it, <laughs> and then a lot of people are loving it. And then we have the people that were sitting there saying that, oh, J. Cole, another with another boring album. And then you have the whole little pump thing going on as well. And to be honest, man, the album to me was amazing from start to finish. There's still two tracks on here that I really wasn't feeling. Um, I think it was the same one that I said from the get go. Actually, there's only one track on here that I hate now. Like I, I, I remember now. Cause at first I've told y'all I didn't really like motivate and friends. Oh, motivate is fire. That shit is pure fuego in the car. I fucks with that. I bumps that. And I think I said I didn't like window pane because I had to like hear it in like another setting and actually like listen to it. Man, window pane is fire, bro. That bit, ooh, that bit be hitting. Nah, but for real though, man. From start to finish, this 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 album was something amazing. Just because um he was kind of getting at every issue. You know, uh, issues that a lot of the newer rappers go through. And uh, first thing I want to get at is, man, is the 1985 intro to the fall off. Hopefully this is, uh, again, they said he made this, this album in two weeks, which is crazy. He made the album in two weeks. That's something amazing. This sound like, you know, this is well thought. I wouldn't say the lyrics were too deep. But everything J. Cole was speaking on, man, you know, he was from start to finish. He got his message across in such a short amount of time. That's amazing. Um, I think the track that really stood out to me the most was window pain but uh but, but before that so intro to the fall off, i hope that's another album because like i said two weeks hopefully he comes out with one at the end of the year i want something from j cole to just like change people's minds if this already hasn't changed his mind because in my opinion this is his top three best work um you know for me i still think forest hills drive and even um, Sideline Story is, is still up there. A lot of people don't agree with me with Sideline Story, but as long as Dollar in a Dream and God's Gift exists in his catalog, then Sideline Story isn't going anywhere. Um, but this track right here, man, a lot of people th said that this was a little Pump diss. And J. Cole came out and stated that, you know, if the shoe fits. And I thought that was the perfect response for it because in this in this track, you can see that he was kind of talking about a black artist. I don't even think he was talking about Lil Pump. And as y'all recently know, Lil Pump, you know, said, oh, you want to talk about a 17-year-old? He used the age gap. You want to talk about a 17-year-old? Well, that's lame as shit. You a lame ass. Then I'm like, okay, but Lil Pump was the first one to come at J. Cole talking about some fuck J. Cole, slapping a bitch booty, you know, and shit like that. And then J. Cole actually really really didn't diss him you know he kind of sunned him you know he little brought him you know he, he basically gave him some advice and say look man i've been there i've been young before i i was young i was about the money i was about the bitches you gotta understand man like yo it's just your mindset right now but i'm just trying to give you some food for thought i'm trying to give you some some advice man let you know um this is how it's gonna go in this music shit because i'm 33 i've been doing this now you know like this is an old head trying to speak to the younger generation which i thought was really cool man you know being a bigger person to handle it and a lot of younger people are just like oh this is boring um, you had tracks like Kevin Hart, which is still my favorite track. How, uh, you know, even in the video where he got Kevin in the video and spoke about his, you know, cheating. I think that's one of the issues that we go through in this era as well. Um, I say what? Divorce rates are higher. And, you know, even when you hear like music, a lot of people are not really caring about relationship. There's no more love in the music. Everybody's talk talking about drugs, fucking bitches. Um, you know, I take your chick, fuck her in my Gucci flip flop, shit like that. Y'all know what I mean. I'm even succumbed to that as well, man. You know, the whole like just imagine myself for one person and just trying to think about that. So that shit should be called Devin's Heart because that that's how hard it related to me. But, um, you know, the song was about cheating. And then, as you all know, if y'all didn't know, Kevin Hart had a long last year in 2017 where he was just caught cheating and lying about it. And, and oh my God, while his girlfriend or his fiance was pregnant. And it was the video where Kevin had to come out and, you know, he basically just knew that he was gonna get scrutinized for something that already, you know, basically you have to be a, a in tune with yourself to just have to be in the video and be like, look, I'm gonna get this um, this scrutiny and I'm gonna be okay with it because I know that I made mistakes and this is how I'm gonna accept it. But yeah, but we're all, you know, we're all faced with temptation. We're all faced with, um, you know, there's always gonna be somebody that looks better. I always tell people, there's always gonna be a bigger booty. There are always gonna be bigger titties, but it's all about who you can deal with, who you can vibe with every day. 
and honestly, if you really just love them, I mean, that's what it is what it is. You know, I think that comes with maturity. I think that comes with the person. And I feel like a lot of people just kind of, you know, get into situations that they're not really ready for just off of, um, you know, impulse and lust, kind of, you know, like just, you know, you ever been like, damn, that bit look good. I got to have it right now. You know, like you just can't wait. Got to have it right now. You know, stuff like that. Another track right here, ATM. You know, he did a video for that. And a lot of people really didn't get the whole message of that track as well you know watching the video i always say that too like you know when i watched it like for example when i watched the culture 2 videos um you know culture 2 really didn't have anything to do with culture just from a song standpoint but when you watch their videos you know the migos they, they really do anything on them videos you know showing the visuals of different cultures and you know how they did uh stir fry like that and also how they did um walk it talk it you know doing the whole soul train thing i think videos are also a representation of um you know the lyrics you know they give the lyrics a better meaning and i think for atm right there it just shows you a lot of rappers nowadays are just in love with the money they in, they're in love with the money the money the money the money the money and as you've seen recently i always said j cole was kind of finding himself you know after he you know he made sideline story you know now you see like his hair he's looking like a predator i always tell you know i'm not i don't have any problem flaming him he does look like a predator but the thing is he's okay with that he accepts that He's not worried about the image. He's not worried about what other people are gonna think of him because he accepts that. And that's something he spoke about in Photograph. A lot of people with Instagram, they're really worried about their image. They're really worried about how many likes I'm gonna get. If I don't get this, this, this like, then is society really gonna accept me? So I'm just sitting there like, man, this man J. Cole is speaking on everything. The Cutoff was another track where I'm just like, wow, with Kill Edward, his alter ego. I feel like Kill, I feel like Kill Edward should have been on some of these other tracks though, but that's just my opinion though. But the Kill Edward features, I didn't like him in Friends. I didn't, that's the only track on here that I didn't like, it was Friends. The Cutoff was another track where he just, you know, cutting off Friends and shit like that. I'm just, man, um, you know, back to ATM. Like, a lot of rappers, like I said, nowadays worry about the money too much. They don't really worry about the quality of music. It's all about that quick buck. And I understand everybody has their hustle. Everybody has to grow. Everybody has to live. And yeah, get your money. Get your, get your bag. I understand that. But at the same time, how much is that really you know worth is it really worth the sacrifice uh j cole is a prime example where he has enough money to live but money is just not important to him anymore you know money is is just i always say too like i always said in the video like money loses value as you get more money and a lot of y'all was like damn that's deep it's really deep if you think about it because at the end of the day when you get all this money then who wants you for you you know like as you get more fame as you get more more and bigger and bigger and bigger and your, your, your pockets, you know, get fuller and fuller. How do you know who wants you for you when you don't have anybody? And that's what he kind of, he was getting at in the cutoff as well. You know what I'm saying? Like now that you, you know, you made it and whatnot, people are starting to come out the woodworks like, hey, J. Cole, or hey, Dev, how you been? And that's just fucked up. I mean, I'm, I always say, be thankful for what you have. You know, you, hear, you always hear a lot of rappers that say, um, I was better off when I didn't have shit because you got to think about it, man. It's all genuine at the end of the day. You know, those memories that you have with the family barbecues and family being together and your your brothers and your 10 friends that you had, um, you know, you, you never going to have that. I remember J. Cole said in a, in a song way, way before, you know, you remember what you were as your friend. Your friend 10 years later could be a killer. But 10 years ago, y'all was playing Sega, playing Mega Man. You know, on a Sega man. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, it's always innocent when you're younger and you never know who can be a killer and who and what happens in 10 years. Your best friends can be gone tomorrow. So always cherish those moments, man. You know, Brackets was another one, man, where I felt like he he was just targeting a lot of things where, yeah, I make a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? I'm in this tax bracket. I'm in this bracket. And like, even though that track took a little while to, to ramp up, I'm really a fan of tracks like that when it's kind of chill and, you know, you have that, that lullaby theme going on. A lot of people really don't like that about J. Cole, but I kind of like, I like it when you let the beat rock. And, you know, he's speaking on brackets, talking about, uh, you know, the white man and the black man and where it's been and how, like, you know, the white man still have power. And, we're you know, it's just different tax brackets. Like, a lot of people, like, I spoke on it as well. Like, you can't understand some of this music if you never experienced some of the things he's speaking about. That's probably why it's really boring to you. That's probably why you like Lil Pump and Lil Yachty and the, yeah, 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 and all the screaming music. Because how would you, how would I expect you to understand and relate to some hood anthems you know it's a different tax bracket man you 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 just don't understand you know you've had it all your life your back has never been against the wall of course you wouldn't understand and who am i to get mad at you for not understanding so um 
I think that's another thing too, like when people, when it comes to J. Cole, why he has so much controversy of, is he a top five rapper? Is he worthy enough to be a top five rather, rapper? Rather, rapper, because if you think about his, his music, it's always been, you know, rather boring. I always said, you know, he suffered in the production department because, you know, he doesn't have those upbeat, in your face, kind of banging shit. And a lot of people just, you know, fault him for that. But a lot, a lot of people also fault him for things that they don't understand, which I don't understand. Thing, you know, one meme that goes around that people say is like, you have to be a Harvard student or you have to have a certain kind of intellect to understand J. Cole. And I don't think that's the case at all. You know, I I'm thinking I'm finally understanding what it is that people don't get. It's not that you have to have a certain intellect. I think you just have to have a certain relatability. And I don't even think that's a word. But we just gonna say a relatability to understand what J. Cole is saying. Because if you don't come from the bottom, if you don't come from that side, if you've never had to go through anything like that in your life, and I always, you know, go through the whole suburban versus urban, and I don't even want to go through that no more because a lot of people made some great points with that, saying that, oh, first of all, some people say, oh, J. Cole's not even from the um, J. Cole's not even from the hood. J. Cole's not from the hood. Okay, like oh, blah blah blah. Like he's from Germany. Like he was born in Germany. I was born in the Philippines, my niggas. All right, just because I was born there and I lived there for goddamn a year, I was I was one. Okay, that's that's not where I grew up in. All right. A lot of people are also saying that, you know, I can understand, you know, from what he's speaking on. You don't know what you know what you're talking about. No, musically, okay, I'm with you. If you don't like it musically, then fine. You know, it doesn't have that 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 sound that you want, then by all means, cool. But when you say lyrically it is trash and he's not speaking on anything, I think that you're just a little pump supporter and you're a little butt hurt. You might be 16, 15, you kind of haven't actually experienced life yet because... The things that he was speaking on this track, man, from start to finish, I've gone through mostly all of these things, except maybe once an addict, because like I said, I never knew J. Cole's mother, you know, he know, I never knew he went through some shit like that with his mom, even if that's true or not, if you're talking about someone else's mom, but I've never had to go through family addiction like that with drugs. I've had friends, you know, with addiction like that, but never, um, never a family member, but you know, tracks like Window Pain, Kevin's Hard, Motivate, ATM, Cut Off, Photograph, you know, <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. And if you're one of those people that got butt hurt by um, the whole little pump thing, he, there's no other way that J. Cole could not have handled that, um, you know, basically like just by giving him advice and being the bigger person. It's kind of like that reverse psychology, you know, kill him with kindness. That's all you really do. Kill him with kindness. Kill him with a smile. That's how you get under people's skin. You know how you get under an angry person's skin? Just smile. Angry people hate that shit. That's because I used to be an angry person. And I would hate when people would just be so happy and smile. I'm just like, yeah, you got it. You got it. You know, that passive aggressive. I never liked that. So, um, J. Cole, man, kudos to you, my guy. This is one of the best albums I've heard in a long time. I honestly think that this might be your classic. I think this is what a lot of people were waiting for. And a lot of people say that uh, numbers don't lie. A lot of people are saying that, oh, um, you know, he's he hasn't had a classic under his belt, so he can't be a legend. Well, my dude literally went platinum again by himself. He's going to go platinum again by himself and, you know, with himself, featuring himself. And, you know, this is off of no no publicity. This is off of nothing. He basically came out of the air with the album saying, I'm going to drop the album on Friday. Good luck, guys. And the album sold hella well. I think it went, what, what 600,000, 500,000 maybe first week or something like that. Um... I don't know the numbers right now. You know, this is me speaking off the top of my head, but that's that's something amazing for you to be a nobody and to be talked about and looked on and, and argued about and you know so much controversy around your name. You are somebody. If you don't have haters, you're not doing anything right. Even goes for the little yachty. And I'm just gonna keep it like that, man. Let me know how y'all feel about the album, man. Let me know what y'all top three. I already told y'all my top three J Cole albums are in order. Uh, I wouldn't say in order. I would say Forest Hills Drive might be two one sideline might be one two damn it's kind of hard because it's just interchangeable man there's like different tracks i would choose and i would make it to a, a complete album i don't know man uh god's gift is still one of the greatest and dollar dollar in the dream is still one of the best cold tracks i've ever heard that's the the spirit and the motivation in that track i just you know you can't get overwhelmed you can't get nothing but goosebumps when you hear um dollar in a dream because it it, it really it, it really does be like that you know your, your back's against the wall you have nothing left and you just risk it all in yourself and you got nothing but a dollar 
and a dream. <laughs> so we're going to keep it like that, man. Until next time, this has been your boy, Dev. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, share. Let me know how y'all feel about the album. Uh, let me know if anything changed. I think the album for me just got better. I'm still analyzing it as the days go on. And like I said, it doesn't take an intellectual to get Cole, but you have to somewhat relate to J. Cole to get his music. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people are getting confused with. Till the next time, it's been your boy Dev, we out. And yeah, subscribe, follow me on social medias. I got my Andre 3000 hair going, I gotta wash my hair, do not judge. You see this shit right quick, this shit is just equipment out right here. Um, Till the next time, we out.